Right, here we go. Um, markets for another week. Um, this is how I like to start off the week, looking at um, the markets, you know, on a weekly basis or, an, or at least on a daily basis. And f looking at the first two or three things that really strike me, that is one, right? We've come back to retest an important level. Boom, boom, boom. Um, you know, that trend line broken still. They're really the two biggest things by far and away. I guess there's also this beautiful retracement there. And the fourth thing is, which is the million dollar question, which is this retracement, the correction we're seeing, doesn't mean the party's over or the party's just restarted. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on um, so let's zoom in a little bit more closely and adjust these for the wicks on here and we're gonna have a look at these retracements um, so we are sitting bang on like the 61.8% uh, retracement of the move down so far and at a very important level that had resistance there, had support there, and now resistance so far there. Now, million dollar question, of course, I said is, is we, are we talking bear market rally or not? Now, let's look at some of the other um, corrections and how they fared. Like this one's back in 2018. It came back to the 61 right, before going substantially lower. There's that one. Um, let's go back to the GFC. See how some of the retracements went on that for bad macaroons. There's a little one there. Right, that one. That was like bang on the 61. Right, that first one. This second one. Well, depending on where you want to draw it, like on the on the fifty, right? This little one, the twenty-three. This one, the twenty-three. A few stabs down, hey. So there's like a sixty, a fifty, and a twenty-three retracement all the way down. Um, if we go back further to the um, dot com debacle. Now we've got one in here, like the first little one. That was like a 61 retracement. Got another one here, which is almost a 50 re retracement. We've got another one here, right, which was like a 50, maybe a 38, depending on where you want to put it, where you want to draw it. Got another one here, a 38, <laughs> before it bottomed. So there's actually a lot convincing bear market large retracement rallies in all of these things so um so as far as where we are now that's one reason why i'm not convinced whatsoever one iota why we're headed to new highs and it's, the market is still um to be shorted um so that's that one right um a few other reasons when i look at the russell which to me has led the way on um, um, the correction here. Um, to me, it hasn't finished filling in this big gap here. And it is having quite a big retest, but it is very, very likely in my mind to fill that. Um, I'm not gonna bother looking at the NASDAQ and the the Dow, you can look at those for yourselves, but they're, they're, there are a couple of reasons why this, I think, has got technically some good reasons to go lower. The retracement on the S&P has hit a couple of key levels, and if history is any guide, which is really what technical analysis is all about, um, this retracement is um, just a pause in the inevitable drive lower. Um, so I'm short the S&P still, 
I'll, um, uh, as I said, I squared up some of it down at like 41.70, 41.80. Um, and as it rolls over, I will look to increase that short position and put it back on. I'm short the Aussie share market as well, around about 73.50, something like that. Um, I'm still short the bonds, but I have lightened up a little bit, and here is why. When I look at the Aussie three-year bonds, I was short them and I have squared up um, those ones. And there's a couple of reasons why I've squared up. Right. One of them is it has hit my target level, which is very strong in there, of, you know, bit over 2%, two and a quarter percent. So for me, I've made my money, uh, made you know, a few hundred points on there, so that's all good. That's why that one has been squared up. Um, there are a couple of other reasons. One of them is uh, this, which is analysis, an analysis on the housing, Australian housing market and where can the RBA raise rates to, which I've done in Australia, I haven't done for the US, but it looks at going back a bit over 30 years, the RBA cash rate, the average weekly earnings, um, so the incomes, the median house price in Sydney, your repayments as a percentage of income. And we can see during the times of pain, right, GFC and also 90, the 91 recession, this percentage getting up to around about 60%. Okay, and that's when the RBI was raising rates, and then they stopped at you know 61% here. It got as high as 111, right? Very different back then, right? Um, but to me, that's the pain threshold. And when I look at given the salaries, the wages today, um, where rates are at the moment, um, and where. Um, the house prices are, this is what I come up with, and that if the RBA raised to 3%, right, then they start hitting this 71%, you know, um, interest um, loading um, on your income, which is crippling. So to me, I've always thought, right, that 25 to 3%, that's as how high the RBA can go. When I've looked at the bonds and the forward curve that's implied, this is you know, the two-year bond, April 24, three-year bond, April 25, um, April 26. And then I look at the yields there and then the forward rate. The forward rate from the two to three comes out as 3%. Right? So the way in which the, 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 that three-year bond and where the two-year bonds are applying at the moment, it's saying they're expecting the RBA to have a rates at 3% over between April 24 and April 25 which to me, that's the total upper end of um, my expectations. So that's the second reason why I pull that position. I think the three years have run hard. Um, and the other one is, um, this is the, um, if I can get it here, um, this is off a website called yieldreport.com. So I've been short the tens um, more so than the threes and so I've enjoyed the curve flattening, right? There's been a big, big flattener there. Um, and I think that we are coming close to it's time to put on a, a, a steepener. And I think the curve will steepen up a little, little bit. Um, the other one, the reason for it is this, the relative yields across the world. I'm short the German Bunds as well. These are those 10 year yields. Look at the Bund, right? They're, you know, Germany's got a rate, it's not, I don't think it's triple A, Europe's triple A like Australia. But Australia is right up here. We haven't even started raising rates yet. These guys, they've got inflation which is far higher than us, right? And their 10 year bond rates are only just in the last couple of weeks really kicked above zero strongly again. So I think on a relative value basis, being short those the 10 year bonds makes a lot more sense than being short the Aussie one. So that's, I guess, the third reason. So they're partly technical, partly you know fundamental um, reasons, but that's why I'm out of my three year bonds. I'm still short the 10 years. I'm still short the um, two years in the US. I think they've got more to go. Still short the German bonds, which I'm looking to build on. Um, now the US 10 years, um, there's no surprises there. 
um, that is really telling a dire story of the end of a 40 year trend. You know, and it's astonishing to me that the equity market has held up so well given what is going on here. And I still see the um, place for this to go to is up here. You see, you see how it's really neatly met that first target. It's just a few hour retracement, like a one for one. Um, up here is definitely the target that I have in mind. So I'm not short the US 10 years, but the US and the Aussie 10 years, they kind of trade, they're reasonably highly, highly correlated, right? So for me, the Aussie 10s is a proxy for the, the US tens it's just a bit easier for me to trade those ones for a few reasons so that's that one um and then the born um born you know that's really kind of taken off there and there is a nice gap in there for it to go and say hello to and same thing as in the as in the us you know probably even stronger, very strong break. Um, when I look at the US two years, I think they've still got a little bit of way, a little bit of a way to go. Um, they've certainly filled in, um, I mean, that was the easy, easy money. As I said, I've been short these since September, October last year, um, and they've still got a bit of a way to go. Um, I think that they're gonna break that. Um, and I think we're looking at somewhere around about there for these things to go to which will be pretty painful but you know four percent but given where inflation is at the moment it's probably not out of the question there might be a bit of an aggressive target maybe somewhere in here is a bit more realistic but i'm sure still short those i'm just going to keep on rolling them um let's look at gold um Gold, I'm still bearish and I don't have anything on at the moment. Gold is just kind of a bit tricky to trade at the moment because of the geopolitical, you know, debacles. But I want to point out a few things um, on, on gold. Let's go down to a weekly. I'm convinced with gold, you just got to look at it on a, on a weekly. If you look at it anything shorter, you're a um, sucker for punishment. Um, you know, there's a, there's, there's a support line through there. There's this kind of interesting little price action here, right? where it kind of came up, it kind of turned, and then it really shot up, okay? Just keep these in mind, right? Um, there's this kind of trend here, wipe out that bit of noise there. Um, and then there's this bit where it just kind of shot up quite quickly there. So there's a few things going on the last couple of years where it came up, did a bit of a, hit this level, came up, shot right through, weaker, 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 Sudden last gasp, where to next? You know, new all time highs? I really do not think so. It had the chance and it rejected it very, very soundly. And you look at the price action there, that's very bearish. That is a classic turnaround. Now, when we look back the last time it kind of had a high, it's remarkably similar, right? Where we've got this neckline here right where we had this nice little um, run up a test and then a shot right through then this, this the dwindling enthusiasm then a last gasp here right okay, okay. and then it just tanked okay now to me the price action is is it's exactly the same I don't know what this is doing there it's exactly the same. You know, the, these key things. It's approach, where it kind of went up, back, shot through, went up, back, shot through, dwindling highs, dwindling highs, a last gasp, a last gasp. And to me, um, there's only one way, one place where this thing is going, which is down, and um, it will be very, could be very sudden, particularly once it drops through here. So, uh, as I said, I don't, that's all the talk. I don't have anything on at the moment. I am looking, I will keep an eye on, on shorting it though. That's for sure. Um, and the last one, the Aussie dollar. Um, the Aussie dollars, um, 
you know, really, I've, I'm long the Aussie dollar. Um, at the moment, I'm going to be um, building that one for a, a while. You can see how it really is on the down side, it traded beautifully from this breakdown point, which is just in there, you know, one to one, that little wave there, from this breakdown point to there, up to here. Right. Yeah, sorry, one to one point six, almost like right on the um, right on the knocker there, right? Um, probably is depending on if you just fiddle around with this one, you can make it fit. Um, but that does mean when I'm looking for where the Aussie to go to next, right? Up, I'm looking up at the nineties. Sounds pretty outrageous, right? But if commodities keep going the way they are, um, that will happen, and that takes it back to that spot there. I mean, I even think we've got a parity, right? Um, the interest rate scenario will be interesting for the Australian RBA. Um, anyway, so that's what I've got in. So I'm, I'm long the Aussie. Um, I've got nothing in gold, but um, looking to short it on the back of what's going on here in the um, bonds. Um, the US 10s is probably the, 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 the his example to kind of sum it up. Um, I think it's got um, you know more more to go, um, and that 326 level very compelling, you know very compelling. We could have a bit of a pause here, um, and as far as equity risks, um, the the Russell to me um, sums that up very nicely as far as where I think it could be going, um, you know, and the excitement on the um, S&P over the last you know, week and a bit, the rally, um, you know, to me, I don't buy it. I'm not buying it, actually, I'm selling it. Um, I think that this is a very good chance that that could fail. I can't see any rational reason for it going higher. The, these size retracements, historically in the, these big moments in time, and let's face it, this is a big moment in time, but right? bigger than this one. You know, this is inflation out of control, interest rates coming off zero. R massive historic rally in the last two years in equities. Central banks unwinding their um, bond holdings. Um, and, you know, to have like this 60% retracement, people saying, look, we think it's, you know, time to buy it. You know, it's lunacy. I mean, you know, look at this one, the GFC, that's a better indication, right? And it was just a, the briefest of pauses in the unwinding of a long rally. Um, look, now that's pretty much it for me. Um, I hope you have a good one. And uh,